what's up, we're Disturbed, and you're watching Pitcan. Hi, I'm Alona from Pitcam, and we're here today with the band Disturbed. Hi. <laughs> so, how are you guys doing today? How long have you been here, and how long, uh, when, when's your next show? We just got here about, an hour, what, an hour and a half ago, two hours yeah. ago? Um, but we were previously in London doing press there as well, so. Uh, but we don't have a, a show until um, the uh, first week of August. That's when we start our touring cycle. We're just here to do a promotional run. And where are you guys going next after Berlin? Home. Oh, home. <laughs> <laughs> home. Um, do you guys know any German words? Uh, my, my parents uh, come from an, uh, an Orthodox Jewish background, so they speak Yiddish. And so I learned Yiddish when I was a child. So a lot of the nuances that are in Yiddish are, it's a, it's a combination of German and Slavic. Oh so <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a little tough, but you know, like you would say for what is this, was is das, and in Yiddish it'll be was is dus. Okay, it's like slightly different pronunciation, and so I need to listen to you guys. I can understand you some of the time. I don't. I'm, I'm not always good at actually speaking it because, you know, like I said, the pronunciation is different, and it's sometimes misunderstood by you. So you guys formed in 1996, like in completion, right? Mm -hmm. What was the boost to the success? Like, was there a certain concert or song or album where you guys were like, okay, from here we're gonna go up. It's gonna be great now. In Things really started happening for us in a very real way once we started recording those demos with Johnny K. Mm -hmm. Once we started distributing um, cassette samplers. Oh my God, are we dating ourselves? Cassette samplers. Uh, we're talking back, oh, 97, yeah, 98, that, something like that. 98, I think yeah. so. And um, we'd, any money that the band made at the time went back into the band, into our promotions. Um, uh, and we'd act like our own marketing machine. We'd be on every street corner that there was a show. If there were four shows in town on one night, all four band members would each hit a different venue, pass out stickers, pass out flyers, pass out cassette samplers. And you know those demos were part of what was also sent out in promo packs to A&R people all over the country. And that's really what kind of started people, you know, getting people's attention. Uh, and then there was a performance specifically. There's a, a, there used to be a, a music festival in Chicago called Mob Fest, and uh, it, it was it's kind of like a, a meeting of A and R people from all over the country to come see uh, up and coming new talent, much like you know, South by Southwest in Austin is these days. Um, and uh, that was really when things started to get very very real of the ten or twelve. Uh, record label uh, representatives that were in the town that night and of the five or six shows that were going on on the night we were playing, they all came to our show. Oh, wow. And so it was, uh, that, that started things for us, that started the war. So what we're excited about uh, to talk about now, the new album, Asylum, I just got to listen to it, it was great by the way. Um, we know that it's coming out in August, but have you guys picked like maybe a certain date in August or is it not ready to be like not quite sure yeah. yet. It's not confirmed. Um, There's only a tentative date, and so we can't really say one way or the other. We're trying to find the right window, because potentially, if we pick the right window and we have a strong debut, this could be our fourth number one Billboard debut in a row. So we're trying to be very strategic about it, as yeah. long as we don't get stepped on by Ti well, or something. Else. That I mean, <laughs> not gonna and the fact that we start our first. Year, U.S. tour, the Upper tour, in August, so we're trying to, you know, just time when the album can come out. So we're not touring for too long prior to the release. But since we don't know much about it, do you guys want to give us some secrets? Like maybe, um, have you guys picked out an album cover yet for it, or, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know, the title of the record is Asylum, and I don't want to give more away than that, okay. to be honest with you. Um, you know, maybe you we, made it. We, Raymond Swanlin, ah, yes. Raymond Swanlin is the artist's name, uh, and uh, he did an amazing job. We're very, very happy with it. It's a very striking piece of album artwork, and uh, we're looking forward to see what everybody else's impression is of it. It's a little frightening. And what do you think is going to make this album stand out from all the other albums that you guys have made? It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, we just we feel great about it. We feel it's a continued evolution of of the band. I mean, uh, I know we mentioned in many interviews already that we don't like to say it's stronger, harder, faster, darker this time. But you know, there's there's always a, a growth to it. You know, we we think that. We're not going to put out an album unless we feel that we've stepped up our game and that the songs are continuing to, to elevate. And uh, we feel good about the whole body of work. And why did you guys pick the name Asylum? Well, the song specifically uh, is about uh, the memory of a lost love driving you to the brink of insanity, of madness. And yet that memory is still a haven for you, a safe place. It embraces the dual meaning of the word asylum, of it also being, uh, having the connotation of a mental institution, an insane asylum, and also being a haven or a safe place. Um, that's kind of what unifies the material on the record as well. Uh, it, the record speaks about the chaos of life and, and the world we live in and the trials and tribulations that we face and how they can push us to the brink of insanity. Yet this is our home, and this is the place where we feel safe. So we have that duality that we live in in our current existence. And who writes the songs? Do you all write them? And what are the lyrics mostly based on? I mean, how important are lyrics to you in general? The songs are collaborative. It always starts with Danny coming up with a riff. He brings it to Mikey. They put it into a progression for song structure. Um, and then um, it gets sent to me and I start improvising with uh, a, a melody and a rhythm for the vocal and a scat type of format, like a jazz musician. No real words, just kind of gibberish, like skilly da ba but it actually it sounds a lot weirder a than jazz that. Hands. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I had a little... No. But um, lyrics are incredibly important. The lyrics are the last thing to come. I write the lyrics to the pre-existing rhythm and melody in this gibberish format that I put over the, the music, and I have to find the right words to still fit the nuances and the cadence and the rhythm of the gibberish and still tell a story and have it mean something. But the lyrics are always very personal, very passionate, and uh, very meaningful uh, to us and to myself in particular. They come from my heart, and uh, they're always... a uh, uh, a source of catharsis for me. You know, it gives me the ability to vent. Helps. Every personal um, themed song on the record is a direct reflection of something that went on in my personal life. Um, the Infection, for example, uh, is a song that deals with depression and how it can eat away inside you. And um, if you don't overcome it, it can destroy you. Um, a song, uh, Crucified, it was about uh, a relationship that fell apart of mine uh, and the desperation that it brings you to. Um, there's a song called My Child on the record which is, deals with um, a, uh, I had a, I had gotten a, pro a, a, a previous girlfriend pregnant and got ready to have the baby and was anticipating it, and she miscarried after the first trimester. So I was ready in the mindset of, okay, I'm going to become a father, I'm ready, I want to do this, and we lost the child.